Hello, welcome to Community Corner. My name is, my name is, my name is Ryan Nicholas Gray. Uh, my name is Alan Connie Castle. My name is David David Taylor. I welcome you to Community Corner. Today we welcome Elizabeth Kelly, who works in the broad field of individuals with disabilities. She is currently the host of the PBS show, A Wider World. It features people, abilities. She is a good friend to those with disabilities. She is a strong voice in the rights of those with all kinds of disabilities. Welcome, Elizabeth. Welcome, Elizabeth. Welcome. Well, thank you, Ryan. I'm very glad to be Elizabeth, here. Elizabeth, tell us, tell us a little bit about your background growing up. Growing up? Uh, well, growing up, I was pretty much a regular kid, but um, one of the things that uh, I always loved to do was to um, make sure that people um, were respected. And that was something that was very important. In my family, we talked a lot about giving back and to make sure that people um, were always respected, that uh, my father used to preach long before it was popular against bullying and other kinds of things too. And I think all of that made sure that I was very sensitive to, um, to other people's feelings growing up. Um, tell us about your family. My family. I'm the oldest of four children, and I now have four children of my own, and I have almost four grandchildren. I have three grandchildren and a little grandbaby that's due in May. So. In May? In May, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Her name's Bella. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell us some of your career interests. My interest. Well, um, I love broadcasting, and that's one of the things. I love to meet people. Me too. Do you? I love to know what makes people tick. I want to talk to them and find out their stories, and that's one of the things that I absolutely love to do. Um, and in my other job, I also am executive director at a homeless shelter because um, I also am very concerned about a lot of social issues and social justice issues. Um, in my spare time, um, I love to exercise. I uh, have a little dog that is absolutely wonderful. And uh, of course, with family, as family as big as mine, um, I'm pretty busy with all of them as well. Please tell us a little bit about the part of a, w a wider world. A wider world, the show on ability. Um, what I really love about a wider world is that it's about celebrating the abilities of all. And it's about, um, breaking down stigma, um, helping people understand that every single one of us have amazing things to offer and we're all put on this earth for a lot of good reasons and we make a difference. So what we do is we talk to people that sometimes people might think of as being maybe more ordinary and not having a good story, but each of us has an amazing story to tell and I'm the lucky one who gets to tell it. I'm home as your show on the air. A Wider World has been on the air for 13 years, but it used to be called Disabilities Today. And about a year before um, my predecessor, the late Roger McCarvel, uh, about a year before he died, he wanted to change the name of the show to something that was really positive because he really felt that we have this wider world out there that each of us is a part of. And instead of setting people apart, he wanted to emphasize the fact that we were all included in this world. And so the show's been on a long time. In fact, it's the longest running show that has a, an ability theme um, a, in the United States. And actually, I think that it's the only one that's regularly airing in the United States. Cool. Yeah. We and when does a wire will air? Here in the Detroit area, A Wider World airs on Tuesdays at 5.30 on Channel 56, the PBS station locally. And then it's in about 45 markets in the United States, airs throughout Michigan except Grand Rapids. It's the only PBS station that doesn't air it. And it's also seen in Canada, Scandinavia, uh, and the Virgin Islands, like kind of random places, but uh, just depends on who picks up the satellite feed. Okay. Wow. T tell us about some places. Some places. Tell us about the places at PBS airs your show. Well, um, PBS, as I said, airs our show on um, throughout Michigan, except Grand Rapids, and also our show is seen in Canada and other places in Northern Europe and in the Caribbean. <clears throat> Uh, 
Um, how did the show get started? The show was started because Roger McCarville, um, he used to be on a show called Michigan Out of Doors, which was a hunting show on PBS, okay. a hunting and fishing show. And um, he uh, did a segment on it called Outdoors Forever, which was to encourage people that might have physical disabilities um, to get out and hunt. He said you might not be able to stay, get into a tree stand, but you could still, um, there are ways that you could modify um, the access to things that you would use for hunting or fishing, um, boats that, had, that were accessible for people with disabilities. And he became very interested in broadcasting, and he realized that there was no, um, no way that people could hear on a regular basis all the amazing things that people do. And so what he wanted was to have a show that people could watch that would break down stigma, that would celebrate all the things that, uh, that each and every one of us do. So that was how we ended up um, with disabilities today, which then became a wider world. Okay. Why is a show like a wider world important? Wow. Well, a wider world is very important because people really need to know what um, what uh, people can do, and they need not to judge people based on how they look or based on what they might say based on uh, what school they go to or what jobs they do. Um, it's about making sure that when, when we meet someone that we don't have a preconceived notion about them, that we take a look and we see people that are entrepreneurs, people that are broadcasters like all of you, um, people that are um, business people, people that, uh, that um, that work in all kinds of areas, people that are students, and to see, to be surprised and amazed at all of the things that people can do. What is your favorite thing about hosting a, a wider world? My favorite thing about hosting a wider world. I, I truly love um, the people. I love the, the people that I work with, and I love the fact that, as you know, when you go someplace with a camera, a lot of times you get people to talk to you and maybe you meet people that you wouldn't normally meet in your everyday life. And um, I go and ask them lots of questions, but I ask them questions about what it is that they do. And at first people will say, well, I'm not that important. But then we find out that they, people truly are important and they realize that they have a story to tell. And I guess one of my favorite things is when I'm writing the editing scripts after I've interviewed people and I sit there and I look back on all the things that they said, it's so much fun because um, their voice tells something that people didn't know before. And I really love that whole process. Uh, what is the biggest barrier that your show faces? The biggest barrier that our show faces, Aaron, is, um, is the fact that it's hard to get the show on uh, in all the PBS markets because we don't have a big budget. Mm -hmm. You know, all of us do the show, but um, we do it for love rather than money, okay. um, including the people who produce the, the show, who do the editing, the camera work. I mean, we drive a lot of places to do stories. Um, you know, when Roger did the show, he did it. He went to China. He went to Greece. I mean, he was all over the place. I know. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. The farthest I've gone is Denver. <laughs> but we still get to do all those things. But the funding is always hard to get enough funding to be able to do the show justice and then to be able to get it on. I mean, I really believe that all the PBS stations should carry it because in the places where it airs, people really like the show. Um, we have a Facebook site and people post all kinds of things on our Facebook site, um, you know, about the show. People email me about, um, even when I'm not in, in an area, if they watch our YouTube clips, they also will post um, um, their thoughts about uh, something that, we, um, that we're doing on the show and we wanna make people think. So, our biggest barrier is that I would love to see it uh, throughout the United States, but we have to have more money before we can campaign with PBS as a whole 
Right now, it's just, as I said, about 45 markets are picking it up, which is a lot more. When Roger was doing the show, it was about 20 markets. Okay. So we've been growing, but we're growing because I'm calling them up and saying, here, take a look at our show, and uh, trying to get them to put it on. So. Yeah. How has your <coughs> show incorporated social media into its mission? Wow, well, social media, as you all know, I heard you talking about Facebook before we went on the air. And um, social media is really very important because it's a great way for all of us to stay connected. So we, uh, we're a poor show, so we don't have our own website, but we have our own Facebook site. And through Facebook, we're connected to our viewers. Um, we also use YouTube, which is a free site. Mm -hmm. but we post some of our past shows on YouTube. Um, and that has been a great success because we've had people actually write into PBS stations in their location and say, why, why don't we have a wider world on our PBS station? That leads to my other question I do for the same. Me and my two friends are on Facebook a lot. How can we get in contact with your mission statement? Do you want to send me a friend request? Yeah. Okay, send I'll me a friend much. request, and um, and I definitely will. We'd love to have you join us and join our conversation. Okay. Thank you. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be cool. So how has social media like YouTube changed the relationship between the weather world and these viewers? Well, it's actually made it become more intimate <coughs> because... <coughs> A lot of times people watch a TV show and they go, oh, I like the show, or I didn't like the show. But they don't bother telling you because they either have to pick up the phone or they might have to go and email you and they have to find your email address. But on social media, on YouTube, they watch the show and then what they do is they, they'll immediately type in a comment. And so we get some good feedback from people who tell us if we're on the right track or on the wrong track. Um, have you ever had a video go viral? <laughs> on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, we did. That was the coolest thing. We did a story on, uh, the, on the Lupus Alliance on a young woman who has lupus. Yeah. And um, she was really, really sick with lupus, but gradually began to get better. But she became a great spokesperson. And what we found was there are a lot of people out there with lupus who have no idea what to do. They're disconnected. They don't know other people with lupus. They feel isolated like they're the only one. So one day I got a call from the executive producer and he said, there's something wrong with our YouTube site. I said, what's the matter with it? He goes, the numbers are going up really fast. He goes, it's just going crazy. It's just all over the place. <laughs> so anyway, then he got a call from YouTube and they actually made us prove that it was our video because it also got tagged with a, a, um, a rapper named Snoop Dogg. And Snoop Dogg has a daughter who has lupus. Yeah. And so when they interviewed him about lupus, they found the black entertainment television, found our video about lupus, and then they married them. They put the two videos together. Oh, that's cool. And so it was really cool. So that particular video, we it, like in a span of... Um, about maybe an hour and a half, we had like 50,000 hits. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was, and we still continue. That still uh, is by far and away our most popular video because of what I had mentioned, because there's yeah. not a lot of information out about that. Uh, uh, I might need to get the link for that. Me oh too. yeah, definitely. I'll give yeah. you the link for the YouTube. Actually, I can tell you it's okay. youtube.com yep. forward slash a wider world mm -hmm. and then you'll see the you'll see all of the videos all the different stories that we've been doing okay uh, that's the wonderful thing about YouTube <laughs> isn't yeah. it isn't it yeah. it's amazing it kind of it brings that it makes it more intimate it brings that video that you see on television really close to the viewer and of they course. feel like they know they know the person in that particular video mm -hmm. people started writing right to the woman Sharon it, it, totally forgetting it was a TV show. It was almost like they thought that she could talk to them. So we gave her permission to answer a lot of questions. But we had people watching it from South Africa, from Hungary, you know, all kinds of places that you would never imagine that we could never touch. But YouTube, the power of the internet is amazing. Of course. Yeah. <laughs>
I might love it. You love it? <laughs> Me too. Oh, uh, yeah. You're on YouTube every single day. Me too. Really? Yeah. That's fabulous. How do you choose which stories to do? That's always the hard thing because there are so many great stories, and I'm sure you all have a decision process that you have to go through in doing this. But um, a lot of times we do more stories than we think that we can use, and then we always manage to fit them in. Um, I look for stories that, um, that I think the viewers would want to see or that I think it's important for people to know about. Because in the stigma busting area, a lot of times we have to look for stories that, um, like we told a story about um, the lack of dental insurance for people who have def uh, developmental disabilities and that it was a real problem for people who might be in group homes and things like this that their teeth were falling out and they were 25 years old. Well, that's terrible. There is no reason on earth that if we have, everybody has access to um, to dental care, I mean that 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 should happen to people. Mm -hmm. And so we told that story, and um, we interviewed some people from the Macomb Oakland Regional Center, and we interviewed some of the the clients that were losing their teeth because of this. And um, it was amazing. They took the video with them when they went to the state legislature, and um, they really felt that it was an important thing for the legislators. Some of the legislators cried when they saw it because the story was really powerful. So we look at a lot of things. We look at it for entertainment value, but we also look at it more seriously for the impact that the story can make. Right. Another question, uh, before we end, is this. What do you hope, uh, your, 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 uh, what do you hope your viewers uh, of your show will take away from watching your show? From watching my show, I think that, um, the thing that I hope that they take away is that each and every one of us has a, has a purpose and that each and every one of us is important and that that we look to people that we meet to see what it is that they can do because we all have a reason for being here and I think that I would hope that people would reserve judgment and judge people on the things that are important not on anything that they might see um, when they first meet them um, and get to know um, the amazing talents and gifts that each and one of us presents. Wow. Um, how could viewers contact you have show ideas? If they have show ideas, they can contact us. They can contact me directly at ekelly at awiderworld.com. It goes right to my inbox, and uh, I love to hear from viewers and, and love to get story ideas, too, because there's a lot of great things happening out there. Okay. i got two questions right here. What do you think could contribute to, you, to your success? I think that um, there isn't anything else out there um, that that speaks to to that kind of the, the good news kind of stories that that we um, tend to, to promote people get saturated with so many negative things and uh, news that's all about terrible things that are happening and we get to tell good news we get to tell all the things that are that's right with the world all the things that are going on that people really need to know so I think that's really a good portion of our success since me and my friend Ryan are on a couple of committees, my question is, can you be a great keynote speaker in the future for us? Absolutely. Absolutely. I would love to. I would be honored to. Wow. Guys, we got extra time. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, tell me the truth. What is your favorite restaurant in, the, in Michigan? It went to go to Michigan dinner. My favorite restaurant in Michigan? Yeah, it was. Okay, I think it's Cruz and Muir. I love Cruz it. Cruz and Muir. Cruz and Muir. I love their food. I so, love their bread. And their bread. <laughs> oh my goodness, their bread is amazing. To die for, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's amazing. I say my parents like to carry it all the time. I get. I got two food things to ask you. <laughs> what is your favorite drink? My favorite <laughs> drink is iced tea. Me too. Iced tea. Is it iced tea? I love iced I, tea. I, I, I get those Arnold Palmer's. Arnold Palmer's. Oh, with iced tea and the lemonade. Don't lie to me. What's your favorite movie? 
My favorite movie, um, oh wow, I think probably Gone with the Wind just because it's, it, I love the way it's filmed um, for its time. It was something that was groundbreaking. And uh, I love the whole, I love history. And so the idea that it captured a snapshot of history. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, what's your favorite cartoon? My favorite cartoon. Yeah. I oh. think probably Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny. I was telling Jerry Pedro. I like uh, me, Jay Joe, or uh, I know those other shows. Do you? Well, no, you know, Tom, and Jerry. Tom and Jerry. My it's son. So hilarious. My son loved Tom and Jerry when he was growing up. And one time my daughter was playing piano and she was playing a classical piece of music and he was up in his room and he came running yeah. downstairs because he thought Tom and Jerry was on. <laughs> well, um, uh, uh, um, guess what? What? Um, Tom and Jerry and Bugs Bunny are back on TV. Are they really? Uh -huh. Really? Uh, yeah. When? On Cotton Knock, Tom and Jerry's on at, um, Tom and Jerry's on at 1 and Bugs Bunny is on at 12. Oh, wow. What stage? Oh, afternoon. Afternoon, Bugs Bunny's part of Looney Tunes. Oh, I'm going to have to check it out. Where is your favorite vacation spot to go to? My favorite vacation spot? Anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. Yeah. Um, it's always on a beach. <laughs> I love warmth in the beach. Um, a, a couple of years ago, I went to um, down to uh, south of Cancun on the Mayan Riviera, and I love that. But I also like to go anywhere I can speak Spanish because when I was in college, I majored in Spanish. And so um, I love Spain, and uh, I don't get to go there often, only about three times in my life, but it was all wonderful. Do you like history? Pardon? Do you love history? I love history. What is your all time favorite luxury ocean liner? Luxury ocean liner. <laughs> oh, like the Titanic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, um, probably, I've never been on it, but I've heard that the QE2 is beautiful. Oh, the QE2? I'm dying to see if we can read, I'm dying to see a real ship by sighting in the future. Uh, I've been on a cruise, oh, and cool. um, the ships are amazing. The kinds of mm -hmm. things that they have, I mean, you know, and you get rocked to sleep every night, and just get this very gentle rocking going on. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's your favorite computer? My favorite computer? Uh-huh. Uh, I have a Dell. Uh, a Dell? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I have a laptop, a Dell, you have a, Yeah, I have a laptop Dell, so yep. it's a good one. What is, is your favorite computer game? My favorite computer game? See, I'm really bad at computer games. My grandkids have actually forbidden me to play them because they say you're really bad at them, Nana. So Nana. I'm, I'm bad. I know they call me Nana. I'm bad at computer games, so I mostly watch... Um, my husband has one that's called, uh, it's, uh, it's about fishing. And yeah. so he likes to do that. He loves to fish. <laughs> and so he has a fishing game. So I do play that with him sometimes, but he still beats me. So <laughs> when I was young, I love computer games. Did you? Yeah, I like Battleship. I like Clue. I'm Indian Jones. Oh, those are don't good. Don't forget, um, um, uh, um, a game they played a lot when I was over was one of the world was Count My Sagan Eagle. Oh yeah, I can't forget that game. In Titanic. Yeah, would you please call us Would you please call us sure, Thank you, you Elizabeth for being our guest today. You have shared a lot of personal information and told us how you have chosen to live your life and help inform others about those with disabilities. Your career, I suppose, gives others hope and encouragement and helps educate the public with two higher levels of thought and conduct regarding those with challenges. She, she is well known as an advocate. It's wonderful getting to know you and we appreciate you're coming today to face it with us. Thank you, Elizabeth Kelly. Thank Elizabeth. you so much for having me. Good one, I'm Ryan Nicholas Gray. My two friends here, and then they are. Uh, my name is Alan. Uh, my name is Alan Connor Castle. Thanks for being my guest and for me, Connor. And I'm David Dewitt Tittle. To all you may.
Tchau. Tchau.